is <laughs> Thursday morning and I'm knackered to be fair. I was uh, up late, couldn't get to bed and then um, was up early. I just seem to wake up at five o'clock no matter what time I go to bed. I think I went to bed about one in the end because uh, I couldn't sleep. We played seven aside yesterday. I managed to play even with a bad back because I think it's muscular and if you stop if you stop doing stuff and just sit down and rest, that's where I feel you end up getting stiffer and you end up making it worse. Um, as long as I'm not lifting big heavy stuff, it's fine. Obviously, dotting about between the jobs and doing as much as I can. But I flagged the teams before the game. I'm going to sound like a sore loser here because we lost yesterday, but it was like a considerable loss again. And I feel like when you play seven aside, if at any point it's like 10 0, you know you've picked the teams <laughs> unfairly. So I flagged it before, we was like, look, these aren't fair. And we changed them. And then for some reason, about five minutes before the game, we went back to the original unfair teams. And yeah, after like a few minutes, it was like four or five nil. And well, it's too late because we keep track of all the scores. But one of the lads came to watch and I gave him the YouTube phone and he videoed, he videoed the game. And anyone who plays, five aside, seven aside, you'll know how funny it is. You lock 14 people in a cage for an hour and obviously funny stuff happens, which last night was no different. But what you get from videoing it is like people forget, like they play the game and like they forget what they've done like an hour ago. And they forget that like yeah the teams were so unfair and stuff but there's lads who like we, we actually used it for VAR so there was a goal there was a goal of um, well, I scored it and um, they were saying I was in the area and I was saying it wasn't and we went back and watched it it took like 20 seconds on um, on the side of the pitch so we had our own little fat uh, seven aside VAR and you can see that it wasn't in the box but it was funny so I've uploaded a video of that. If anyone does enjoy watching Seven Aside who also watches construction, head over because obviously I'm not gonna put that on our channel. But yeah, it's um, it's a good little game we have on a Wednesday. It gets uh, heated in the WhatsApp group beforehand. And back to today, the plan for today is I've gotta to go to the flats that I own because one of the water heaters has stopped working and they sent someone else out to have a fiddle with it and haven't fixed it and it's now been like ages and it was when someone's moved out the flat so luckily no one's been in it. Now someone is moving in there Monday so we're going to go today, make sure uh, the hot water's on to that flat and have a look at anything else. Um, oh there's a, I think there's a problem with one of the fiberglass bay windows so I'll take the triple ladders and have a look at that. Uh, ben and Blaine have been on Western yesterday for extractor fans because we, we had that viewing that I did and it's good, um, I always feel, I feel like there's a place for estate agents to do the viewings because people can be honest with them and sort of they get a bit of feedback and stuff like that. Whereas I do feel like if there's a second or this was a third viewing, I do like doing it because, you know, you go in and they, they sort of raise little bits and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, don't, like, don't worry, we'll, we'll do that. Or there was like some staining on the chimney stack where um, it was actually coming through the pots. So we just needed to put some cows on the top, like to stop water getting in. But there was like some yellow staining that we'd gone over, but it like, Lightly come through, and the person who's viewing it was like, Oh, we've just spent thousands and thousands of pounds on like fixing round our chimney pots. And I was like, Oh, yeah, well, we fixed that now, so that's been like that for months. And that staining is just obviously what was previously there, so we'll stain block it and do it. But I was like, Well, I'll I can guarantee that 
I can guarantee that that won't leak for you for like a year um, if, if you do buy the house. So the stuff that like obviously being there in person, you can you can tell people. And then there was another bit of yellowing. Uh, I don't know if people who watch the videos will see when um, Phil, the painter and decorator, was talking about it. The the old wallpaper paste they used to use used to bring yellow in through so you'd take the wallpaper off and then obviously paint it and it used to draw some of the staining out of the old wallpaper piece so that was another one because it was like in the middle of the house on a middle internal wall with no bathrooms or anything above so they were thinking oh it's a leak and it wasn't um, but yeah so I'm gonna head to the well, I'm just pulling up to the student jobs now and we'll see what they've got planned on the uh, other student ones we've got finishing so we're just on two of them at the minute um, one of the other builders and then one they've um, I say they've, they've recently took on so that's the plan for today good morning, good morning. when are you going to wear a high vis lad? he didn't know it was required he didn't know it was required <laughs> yeah. he's got it on there it is, it is, that's right, it's a two, but it is, it is high vis, isn't it? Oh, I'll turn that music off for us. Can't get enough of your love, baby. Lewis has gone for the high vis slash going to play footy after work with a <laughs> with a with a rip in the pat in the shorts. Morning, mate. You alright? Are you alright being on YouTube? Are you all right being on YouTube or do we need to blare your face? And and Andy was like, uh, don't be putting me on that. Who <laughs> was that? Andy. The other Andy. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. It's nearly th nearly there, isn't it? Yeah. I was just making a list of what these need to do now. So they're gonna I've said while it's nice weather, box the fronts off because then if it starts raining yeah because yeah. we had that on the other one where yeah. everyone was inside yeah. and then like so started running out of jobs and then it started raining and i was like oh we should yeah. have done just to push it if they can get the arcs on top the ones we're missing and they're two scribes on that floor there Sad. and then them two floors are done the painters have got a clear run at it then do you know what i mean and then next thing will be flooring is it carl's doing after weekend oh sad yeah. he's back What have we just, what have we just seen it um, at the shop then? We just went to Sayers to get a cup of tea and we're just on the way to Newsham and there was a group of lads smoking weed before eight o'clock. I think, obviously, I don't know how, I don't know how, how people go to work and do that, you know? I don't even know what it feels like to smoke No. I've never smoked, I've never smoked a ciggy. I don't, I don't see him. Um, I was when I was young and it was like, just try it. Yeah, just and, try and I was like, why would you? Why would, <laughs> why would you try it if you don't want to? Do you know what I mean? It's like, why don't you just try heroin? Just try it once and then you go, but what if I like it? Yeah. What if I like it and then I get addicted to it? And you go, oh, you shouldn't have tried it. Same with smoking, it's like, it's like if someone said to you, yeah, here's a, I've, I've invented it. Imagine going on Dragon's Den now with a, a, a soft drink and you went, like, the first time you'll have it, it tastes horrible and it could give you cancer and it'll make you die. It'll make you die early. But, like, I want, like, 100 grand for 10% of my company. And they were like, so why would anyone buy your drink? And you'd be like, because, like, they eventually they'll like it and get addicted to it. Yeah. And you'd be like, nah, that's what Siggy's are, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> oh, so we got it. We'll do the water tank first, because that's the most important. Make sure that, because someone's moving into the top flat, flat well, seven. Okay. Um, and I think the Harris Association have been fixing this for ages. Oh yeah, I, I know where that is. Yeah. Um, but Ben said he's disconnected one of the, uh, they do horizontal ones and vertical ones. I didn't think it made a difference, but apparently it does. I don't know, I don't actually know what difference it makes, whether it wouldn't work or would work. If you, if you, you know the hot water cylinders that we use? Yeah. 
where like some of them are like made to go horizontal, some of them made to go vertical. Vertical. It must be something to do with the elements, like it being in the water or whatever. Or I don't know. But I always thought they were like well, the whole thing was water, anyway. But Ben disconnected. I bought a vertical one for Western, and then we didn't end up using it. So I brought it here and was like, we'll just swap the the old one that's not working for the brand new one. But because it's a vertical one. It's hard to it won't it, it won't fit in the space they've got. So there's that one above the there's one above the staff toilet that it will fit in. So mm. Ben's disconnected the horizontal one from that to put in flat seven, but he said it weighs a ton and he can't lift it down. He doesn't know how to drain the water out of it. Yeah. So he's rang the company oh, and they were like they were like we don't know how to drain the water out of it either. <laughs> I'm mad how many people go through red lights, isn't it? Yeah, that was... That was bang on, that one. Yeah. What, um, how amazing is Newsham Park? Massive. Yeah, like... So I did notice the other day, went for a walk around Shefton Park, and that's turned into a bit of a dump. Is it? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's well, like this. The, like, when, when you think that this used to be, well, it's all fenced off, isn't it? With, like, iron gates everywhere. Whole thing, the roads are massive, the houses are huge, it's got its own park, it's got its own gardens with fountains, it's got its own park. Yeah. It's like insane, isn't it? And yet somehow over the years it's it's all been turned into flats and bedsits and but there are still some family homes here. It's similar similar to Sefton Park really that but Sefton Park's obviously kept its value whereas Newsham's yeah, Newsham Park's not kept its value the same. But I hope, well, hopefully for me, one day this will go back up in value. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't mind buying more of these. Because when, when I bought this, I just went like from the city centre outwards, and this was like the best option value for money you could get. Where's that skip for? Let's go in and uh, Good job. do this tank. So we're just in uh, the block of flats that we own, and there's the AOV, automatic opening vent, so that little motor at the bottom there. If I was to press, I don't know why that's come out actually. If I was to press this call point, that would open, and then obviously the fire here come in and shut it. So there's a couple of snags, so these are the staff toilets that we need to pull and glue this vinyl back down because it's got a bit of bubbles in. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a um, not bad staff toilet and a bath, is it? Where's the plug gun? Yeah, just, every time we come round, there's always little bits that you see that you're like, oh, little towel, towel of that, and then we were going to put um, like some washers and dryers there, but I don't think they haven't asked for that. We've got them in each room, each flat. So if someone's moving into flat seven, let's see. Got a nice little shower. I've gone for PVC cladding in these. So this is one of the, oh, this is the one that's not working. So someone's been and done this to one of them. So I just need to send this model to the manufacturer and they'll send me a new part. And then here's the one I dropped off, which was brand new, there's not got a dent in it, but um but as you can see that's a, a vertical one versus I don't know where it says it now. Probably say it here, yeah. Tessie, blah, 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 blah. No. 100 litres this one. I think the other one's only 80. I should say a bit of a little hot yeah, there, and 80. Um, so yeah, I don't really see the difference in the vertical and horizontal, but other than, yeah, that's definitely the vertical one. You can just tell by the in pressure pit there so we're going to fit this one in the staff toilets so we need to put it up here so there is an access here for 
above the staff toilets. There you go. So there's one there. And we can fit the vertical one up here because that's got the space. But as Ben said, that one didn't have the space to fit. It looks like it does, doesn't it? Oh no. no. Maybe not. I'll have a look. No, it must be tight with like the, the pipes or something at the bottom. But yeah, let's get um bedroom's nice, isn't it? Yeah. They've actually looked after this, haven't they? Yeah, but yeah, we've just kept like the original beams in, and then the kitchens. Um, this is the kitchen living area. So they've got a little bay window, and then, in all honesty, it is a very basic kitchen. But at the time, we had it on a bridge loan, and I had completely run out of money, so. I think uh, it's on a five-year lease, so if we get to the end of this five-year lease, maybe we'll look to upgrade some of the stuff so that we've got the guarantees back on them. Or, as and when they break, we'll put, you know, better better quality stuff in. But, obviously, it's done the job. I don't think they do much cooking, to be fair. As you can see, some of these aren't, um, aren't massively o overused, but, yeah. It's uh, what we've been three three years now since this was built, and um, oh, looking quite uh, looking quite good. So we are up in the um, loft above the staff toilets, and this is the one we want to take out and fit the vertical one here. So this is the one we want to put in the um, flat seven that'll fit in. However, I've just tried to move that and it must weigh about, well, 82 litres of water, plus obviously the tank and stuff, so it's probably you know, 90 kilograms. Um, ben was saying he was struggling to drain it. However, what I think I'm gonna do is open these two valves up here and here. And then if we tilt the Container. Lou, you're going to have to go and get a bucket. And if we tilt that into a bucket and drain it so that we can obviously get it out and into the next one because we won't be able to lift that now. So we've managed to reopen both valves and put this. I think you need to come out of that pressure release here, isn't it? And then we're going to tilt this tank. On the side, we're getting there. We're slowly getting it out. So, a few, a few of these buckets, and then we might be able to lift this down, hopefully. So, what happens is, it'll do that, and then it relies on. Know, that'll stay. On me. Uh, <laughs> Putting a bit of pressure into. Okay. I wonder how it goes. I always just thought it was just an empty tank, you know, like the old copper cylinder ones, but maybe this is like in it's like a rad, you know, it's in some sort of like tubing. I don't know. But we can have a look in that other one, can't we? Stop that. Really? So it doesn't help uh, playing footy, SD. Can you grab it or not? So that's the vertical one, but what I've decided is rather than trying to fit that now, I'm just going to bring the broken horizontal one up 
and I'll put the staff toilet water back on, but just the cold, so that it's working, it's working, and then I'll wait for this part that I've just ordered, and then fit that to the horizontal one, and then we'll just keep this as a backup. So this is inside the tank, but I've just seen that, like, what is all that stuff that's in it? It's like, I don't even know what that is, do you? Is it, is it like corroded or? Oh, what's that? Eh? That, what is that? It's here, yeah, it's like the inside of the things, corroded. You've got small hands, you see them grab some of that. What kind of are you that? What is that? It looks, like, it looks like mints. Maybe we do need a new tank then. Yeah, where's that bin? Where's the exit things? There's one oh, there, there and there. Oh, so... Ah, look, yeah. Does that make sense now? So that one there, that I'm focusing on now, I'll put a circle around it, is where it comes in or out. And then that one there, on the left, that can't seem to focus on. That one, that, that's one of the valves and that's the other valve. That's weird that, isn't it? So the, the tank's just, what, what corroded away? What has it? Yeah, it has, isn't it? So what's caused that? Just only where the, it's only gone to like where the heating element is. That's weird, that. So we are in the flat seven one now. I'm just in like the little fireproof um, cubby hole that we put the tanks in there, stop taps in. So we've got stop tap there. Um, we've got, we've just connected this and put it on. So red means it's heating up, obviously it's got all uh, cold water in so this is the one from the staff toilet that's now in flat seven and then we're gonna order a, a new tank and a new part well i've just messaged the companies because what i think that is i think that's like grime and lime scale and crap from the mains that's coming in so i'm just wondering now whether we whether we have a look at fitting some sort of filters between the mains and these cylinders because i've just read that that will um obviously sit at the bottom it'll make the performance of the tank use more energy like you know just cause all sorts of issues uh, it does sit at the bottom so it doesn't get um drank or anything like that or showered with however that that is in the tank which is a bit it's a bit of an eye opener to be honest because they're only what three years old maybe three and a bit years old um these tanks so I'm wondering if any of the other tanks are like that and if there's anything we can do to limit that. I mean, this isn't the neatest of um, things, but what what we found was, that's just a trip to say something. Um, what we found was that if we didn't use, if we used anything other than flexies, they just leaked. Um, we tried using metal um, brass fixings and obviously copper pipe and all neat and stuff and it was just, uh, every one of them leaked, so we, we swapped to flexies and touch wood, we haven't had any issues um, leaking from here since we put them in. So let me go and speak to the other company now about um, da -da 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 -da, uh, order a new one and order an element maybe. So this tank is obviously been empty, so we've just, I can feel that, I can feel the mains water going, I think we can hear it. Um, and then we've just opened up the hot water tap in the, in the toilet. And Lewis has just sat on the end of the toilet and broke it, so we can go and get it. We'll have to take that one off so we can match the, match the shape. Right, I might turn that off now and let the pressure build. If water's starting to come out, or I don't know where to leave it. 
leave this until it's flowing fully with water. And same with the kitchen one. Slide off yeah, the clip at the back. Yeah. Right, I'll shut that one. <laughs> I think I might have one of them actually off the other one of the lads fit at their own seat. Right, leave that one to fill up now and then I think there's one of them and we took one out in the shed, didn't we? Because I remember one of the tenants wanted their own fancy seat. And I kept that. In the shed in the back I, I kept that in the shed. The the yeah, go and have a look there. We're getting some water now, we just need to wait for that pressure to build. So I was just explaining to Lewis that the benefits of these hot water cylinders in a block of flats is that you'll have an incoming supply of water. And if we were to do, say, a combi boiler that was split between a couple of flats, say, or if you're doing a HMO, for example, you can have a you could have one of these hot water cylinders above each bedroom ensuite, say. And then what happens is, as and when the mains pressure comes in, that mains pressure is transferred to the hot water cylinder. And unlike a combi boiler where you have um the water's heated on demand and you've only got the mains pressure. So if two people use the same shower, the pressure goes down. If three people do it, it just won't work. It'll just trickle out. With these hot water cylinders, it will use the mains water pressure to fill the cylinder. So if one person, if, if no one's using them, they will all fill up to the mains pressure. And then as and when people are using them, it will give mains pressure hot water and then obviously top itself up with mains fresh hot water, so you'd have to use, they'd all have to be on at the same time, and you'd still get, I'm not sure how long you'd get, but you'd still get, obviously, enough time, say, for a shower, or to wash your hands, or enough hot water, for it then to refill from the mains, sort of gradually, which is obviously better. So, back up here again, so we've got the blue light on, but, what I'm going to do is because so I'm unplug it and I'm just going to show you what I did then which was hmm, best way of doing this yeah. if it'll stay there so you've got two screws here so what's happened is I have Those two screws, keep them. Right, I can smell this in <laughs> like overheating. So, what's happened is we've obviously turned the mains on, and because we haven't opened the hot tap, so it hasn't filled up enough. And then I've plugged it in to test whether it's on, and the element has obviously tried to uh, heat up the water, but the water might not have been covering the element completely. So what it has is this little this little contraption here which has a red button that when it gets hot that pops out and trips the trips the power to the element so that had obviously tripped which meant that it wasn't coming on so I've, that's pushed in now and i can clip this back in put the screws back on and we know it's full of water now. So, Lou, just go and test the um, hot water for us. Yeah, just go in here. Just check it's not spitting any, it's not spitting water or anything out. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, sound. Because I know I'm not, I'm not getting any more. Right, so we've got blue, so if I, there you go, that should heat up, because what I want to make sure is that when we leave this flat, we leave this flat with hot water. So this will have a firm, like a firm, thermoregulator, and this will change and switch off if the element is getting too hot. 
So lime scale can cause that. Um, we've just emailed the company about obviously the lime scale that was in this, and they said that every two years they need to be cleaned out by a professional, which I didn't know that. So these will be due, well overdue, a clean, and um, obviously keep the uh, lifespan of the cylinders then. So that's something I'll have to book in. I don't think it's something we'll do. We'll get someone else to do it who's accredited with Tessie. Um, but what I'm just waiting for is that this heats up and doesn't trip off. If anyone's got any suggestions on how to get rid of these bubbles other than, obviously I'm not sure what's happened with the adhesive and that there, because these are, these are actually fiberglass underneath here. So it's, um, it's like a fiberglass roof that goes into a drain. That was just me future proofing it on or, or sort of limiting call out. So this whole this whole floor was fiberglassed into that drain. Not as a not as completely as a wet room but uh, like um tilted into it and stuff but just fiberglass to stop anything going down to the flats below. So if this was to get blocked and water was to overflow or they were to leave the sink on and overflow um anything it would all go into that drain and would be sort of limited to this area rather than going down to the flats below. However, obviously three years, we've got a bit of bubbling. So uh, these actually go underneath. So the flooring was done and then the paneling was done. So the only other thing I can think is to take the sink and toilet out and cut it along there, roll it back and then re-glue it down is what I'm thinking of doing unless Anyone watching has got a better idea of keeping it, keeping its um, integrity really, and just doing it properly. Not like uh, I'm thinking of maybe you could put a pinhole in, but I don't know. I don't know if it's stretched or what. I'll probably let me know. Right, so let's see what was in here. Look at that. So that's just lime scale. It's stuck around the water heater. And pull, pull, lift it up if you can by the metal bits and shake that out. Yeah, and then look at that. So that looks like the bits that would be around the heater that have fell off, you know, the elements. As you can see, so that is, it's all the stuff that's been wrapped around the elements, isn't it? But you just wouldn't think, you just wouldn't think that would all come from... That's weird the way it, it, like obviously that's the length of the element. Like is it, I can't work out, is oh no it's okay here. That's just weird to be inside this tank, isn't it? It'll all be one colour, but let's get all out, all the new elements, and we'll keep this as a spare. So I've just pulled my hand in and pulled these out, and it'd be interesting to see which minerals these are, but these are obviously, it literally looks like sand. So I'm wondering. Um, um, these are even minerals, or like they've been doing work on the mains and a bit of crap's gone into the uh, into the main and come through, come through. So obviously this this property's main. That's horrible, though, isn't it? Though? Yeah, that's better now. There's like one tiny little bit of residue at the bottom there, which hopefully we'll get out now. But that's better. Right, hopefully all done. Let's see, that's gone. What we just need to test now is that we're getting good pressure and that we're getting hot water. Oh, there we go, hot water. And it's not too hot, I've got it on eco. I forget the thermal camera, but oh, maybe you can just trust me that that is nice and warm. Lovely. 
on to the next job. So we were just about to leave and then they mentioned that the hot water in another flat has um, stopped working. So you can see this light blue. However, that's the firmware regulator switch and that's not out. But what's happening is if you tap this, like I put the tiniest bit of pressure on that, the red light comes on to heat and then you can hear the element um, heating up the water inside. So I'm wondering whether it's just the contacts on this switch. You, you can see a little spark every now and then. So what I'm gonna do, turn this off. We've got the other one upstairs. You've got the wiring loop there, haven't you, Lee? From the other one. And what we're gonna do is we'll take this switch out and put it in. See if that fixes it. So we found the old element and it was in the flat where the cylinder wasn't working. However, the person who's in that flat has um, a condition and what he does is he, um, he leaves his taps running all the time. So the staff have to regularly go in and turn the taps off in the kitchen and the bathroom. He's got an obsession with running water. So it makes sense that his element has gone before the others. So I'm not sure what, the, I'm sure this is just like a skin, skinny copper wire that heats up. But as it's the, I've just ordered a new one from the company. But I wanted to see if I could, um, maybe it's not a wire, maybe it, oh no, it was. So, it's like metal, isn't it? Mm. You see that on the video? Mm. See that shining? <laughs> Pretty sure it doesn't look like that. That is so weird, I can't even get that off. I have to get, like a, <coughs> have to get a chisel or something. But while we're here, we're getting a leak off this um, bay window, so I'm going to jump up and have a look at that now. Here we go. There's the uh, judge's house, where all the judges stay when there's a court case. So what I'm looking at is this window has had stuff. So the only thing I can see, see these droplets here? And like that silicone there seems to have got little bits in there because everything else, like I say, this is completely fiberglassed. We've put trays coming down there that these tiles just overlap. So nothing can go back that way. We're not getting anything there. I'm just gonna go and have a look inside again to see, you can see a lot of it's running down here. That's why it's, uh, stained and then obviously the top there so i'm thinking only when it gets really heavy rain is it dripping down here maybe and going through there we didn't put enough of a drip a drip bar on this um so i'll try re-siliconing this i'm just gonna go and have a look inside now to see where exactly the water stains are that might help me a bit more Oh, more the back of this, isn't it? Let's go have a look again. So I've just been in the room and it looks to be coming from behind here. And what I found is this piece of felt, like folded up. Oh, I mean, there's no like staining or anything really on it. Same with that one, so I don't really know how it would be getting in. The only thing I was thinking is have I gone high enough up there, but then I have. That water's not gonna go up like that high and above, so I'm a bit, you know, it's gone three years without leaking. I'm a bit, a bit stuck on where it could be. So the one thing I was thinking is maybe putting a felt support tray there and fiberglass in it, or I don't know. Uh, I'm a bit stumped at the minute, but 
I've pulled that felt down so it overlaps. But then I can't see any, there's no way, there's no broken tiles, no broken ridges anywhere that could get into the felt. So I don't, again, I'm a bit, a bit stumped. Unless there's a broken joint that we can't see, it's getting in, but then it wouldn't be enough to cause water damage like that. So, mm, I don't know on this one. I might pull the felt forward, see if that solves it. If not, I'll take this all off. I'll have to put scaffolding up, take this all off and increase the size of the upstand. And I'm just going to silicone these bits now while I'm up here. Because I genuinely can't see anywhere else that it could be. So, what I've just done is I have foamed the gap that was at the back of these um, that was at the back of these tiles to the thing. I was gonna try and get a yeah, let me lift that up. Oh, I'll try and pull that tile out. But I say I've just foamed the back of that just so that I know nothing's going back up that way. So it just rules out me having to do that, but I've still got obviously the flow off on the sides. So I need two hands to do this tile here, but um, hopefully that will fix it. And then I'm just gonna silicone this bit now. Some of you will remember last time we come, we did the drainage and the weed killer and yeah, there, Lou. And then I f there was bloody loads in the in that Astra as well. But um, this was absolutely the whole street here it was. So I actually bought this off the council. This road. Have you done them, Lou? They look a bit glistening. Uh, have you done them? Might as well do this. All oh, right. Yeah. Um, and this used to be obviously a cut through for people. So we bought it off the council. And funny enough, uh, this building next to us is listed. And when I was doing planning permission for this to turn it into flats, they were like, oh my God, you've, you know, we bought the road. So all we did was carry the wall across as it would have been if it was like that. Um, and they said, oh my God, you've connected to a listed building. So you need to now apply to Heritage England and it could take six to 12 months plus whatever else. And I was on a bridge loan paying like, uh, I can't even remember what it was a month. It was ridiculous. 33% interest, I think it was in the end. And I was like, oh my God. So I said, listen, I will just go and reverse my van and I'll just knock this wall down. <laughs> like, let's forget, forget I ever built it. And uh, luckily they come back and said, right, yeah, I've sent them a picture saying we've cut it back from the wall. And they said, yeah, that's fine. And give us the plan and permission. But... This was all completely like weed, so that weed killer's done really well to be fair. And Lewis is just topping up bits that are uh, trying to get them while the little tiny ones is the is the idea. There's one. Uh, have you done that one, Lou? Yeah, oh yeah. And then oh, just down there, there's a load. You don't want to climb down, do you? <laughs> you got the ladder there. I didn't even do it because of, of the music. <laughs> How many pints can you have at lunch before you get sacked? <laughs> Let's see if Lou knows. Oh. Hello. How are you doing? Did you find the glow plug module? No. No. You found No. So I read it's either on the engine or under the left wing, under the under the passenger side, something it said. Okay. Like, I think you said that as well, didn't you? It might have been like, it said like in this compartment. So, have you just, have you literally had a look there and thought to come find it? No, I was just gonna look it up. I was just gonna have a look on YouTube now, to be honest. That's it, that's it, yeah. Doesn't look exactly the same though. Looks similar. No, no, it does look the same. Yeah, got Why would you put that on the engine? It's a stupid place to put it, isn't it? Hidden away. Vibration and I suppose it's by the glow plugs. True. Mm. But all that heat and 
Yeah. Okay. Well, whether it works or not. <laughs> so this is the actual glow plug module that we think is, that I think is not activating, not recognising that the glow plugs are charged or not charging them and making the car engine, well, the light not come on and the car not start. Because the glow plugs are actually working fine once it does have that signal. So that is a rocker cover. Um, that's what we just phoned Mercedes and asked them for the location of it. And he said normally on the vans, they're quite obvious, they're like normally on the wing here or under the, inside the passenger cab. But obviously this one was a bit more, a bit more hidden. Let's get that swapped and see if it works. So we, we've driven what, like two minutes down the road. Oh, do you want to get the weed killer? Uh, tick off one of these jobs while we're here. Yeah. Oh, he's got his music on this guy, hasn't he? How are you getting on? Oh, I like some ticks here. Is this, this is your snag list you've got? Yep. How are you getting on? This one's looking all right. It's a few years old, this now, isn't it? This was one of the... No, this, this was a fellow who was next door to when we were... Yeah, yeah, but that was, that one we did was six years ago. So it's probably has been. Uh, he's just going to do... Where's that water coming from? Like cleaning up the top there, because the birds have been sat on there. Who's up there? How is he? The birds have been sat on the silver chicken, so we're just going to stick the spikes in there. Ah, yeah. You can see yellow foam. <laughs> it's never a good sign. Uh, Lou's just going to do the weed killer now while he's here. That's good, that weed killer. Which? I went on the front now. Let's see, let them do that. We done it. Uh, you know, did you see uh, Newsham? The side was absolutely like covered in weeds, all gone. And that was like that was a while ago. We did that. When did we do that? Yeah, and just completely dead and haven't grown back. So I've. I, it's almost sometimes if you pull them out, they lose the leaves, and then it's the leaves that take the. Poison into the roots, apparently. Yeah. Let us know if uh, <laughs> if that's right or not. Horticultural <laughs> seller. Yeah. Um, well, the ones on the yard, the fella off is at the yard, I don't know, because he loves he loves wildlife, doesn't he? And weeds. I don't know if like they're probably. Start in the back. Is it moisture? Ah. I don't know what it's still. It's still passable though, isn't it? I say it's, it's a few years old, this one. Shit yourself to Black Nicholas for me. What's he doing washing the windows? <laughs> yeah, I'm coming down. He needs to, jump, needs to wash this bit. window. This happens on every job, doesn't it? Why is that leaking there though? What? Why is it leaking? Out of that. It's just where he's lashed oh, it's because he's lashed it. Um, Sean, have you got many on here? Um, that's right. That's another reason I don't like doing them. And then this, I always think that's so stupid putting the telly there. But oh, he loves it. Swing the doors that way. Yeah, he loves putting the telly there. It's kind of the only place it really can go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but imagine sitting here and half your time. Oh, yeah, I suppose, yeah. Literally just change the swing of your door the other way. Yeah, well, at least if you made it like... I'd square it off. Yeah. Square it off and made a cupboard, it'd, it'd be okay, I think.